Hello, my friends. This is the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twin Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. And that's Not Just Blowing Smoke. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Cooper's in my head. Been a sweet smoke flying through the air. It's the way I feel. All right, I'm Pastor Padrone, and I've got. Paul, Nick, and Dave with Hello. me today. Kendra's here. Hello. Hey, guys. And we also have special guest Talia, who is the liquor rep from Southern Blazers. And Blazers. Huh? Blazers. Blazers. Lasers. Southern Blazers. Southern Blazers. Glazers. Southern Glazers. Yeah. Like the big ice things? Yeah, southern glaciers. Glaciers. Southern glaciers. <laughs> Start again. Southern uh, glaciers. Uh. And um, they have brought uh, some Jefferson Ocean with them for us to pair. This is kind of a uh, reverse episode. Usually, I'll pick a cigar and a pipe tobacco and go to Kendra and say, what could we have with this? This time, a few weeks ago, knowing that we were going to be doing an event with uh, Talia tonight and... Uh, Jefferson um, whiskey, she came to me and asked, what could we pair with this? So tonight, uh, I guess my head's on the chopping block for figuring out <laughs> whether or not this was a good pairing. So um, what I chose to go with Jefferson Ocean is the Tabernacle Havana Seed Connecticut 142 Corona from Foundation Cigars. And from their website... It says, quote, Master Blender Nicholas Melillo, a.k.a. Nicaragua, Whoa. has been working with choice farmers in the Connecticut River Valley since 2014 to develop the Havana Seed Connecticut 142 wrapper. The seed is extremely rare and unlike any other tobacco in the world, whatever that means. Due to the incredible amount of oil from the plant, it takes three years to undergo the fermentation process. The result makes for a delicious medium to full body blend with hints of cedar, spice, rich earthiness, wow. and natural sweetness. The wrapper is the Havana Seed number 142 uh, wrapper. The binder is Mexican San Andreas, and the filler is Honduran and Nicaraguan tobaccos. We are smoking the Corona, which is a five and a quarter by 46. And we are smoking it with Jefferson Ocean. Talia, please tell us about this beautiful whiskey. Mm. Mm. Okay. So Jefferson's Ocean is a really unique brand of bourbon where they're taking the bourbon in the barrels and actually putting it onto a ship that's mm. traveling around the world. So they're partnering with O-Search, mm -hmm. which is a research company that's just collecting data, bringing sharks on board, tagging the sharks. They are putting them back, Kendra, so don't worry. <laughs> they are not killing the sharks. They're putting them back in the ocean. Thank you. And of course, that. you're welcome. <laughs> so <laughs> with the barrels being on the ship, it says a couple different things to the whiskey. Okay. Now... Normally, you think of whiskey aging in a barrel sitting in a warehouse. So just that edge of the barrel is getting into the whiskey. So it's taking a long time to absorb the flavor from the wood. Now, while it's sitting on the ship, the whiskey is constantly moving. So every mm. drop of that bourbon is touching the wood at all times. So it's mm. what's called hyper aging. So you're getting really smooth quality. Doesn't take as long to age where you might age something for 10 years. This could be one year. Now, the other aspect is that you're getting different climates. So you're getting the salt air, you're getting climates from different regions, and the ship is traveling all over the world. So you're getting really salty caramel notes, mm -hmm. some ripe fruits ending in a kind of sweet chocolate, creamy vanilla on the finish. Mm. So it's very unique. Every batch is different. <clears throat> I'm tasting everything that you're talking about. <laughs> yep. It is an incredible, incredible uh, whiskey. Yeah, right off the bat, uh, Nick and I were like looking at each other saying, this is something that I have yet to have in terms mm -hmm. of that initial aroma and, and mm. taste. It was just incredible. The, it nose, really is, the nose is amazing. Yeah, it, it, it really yeah, is. It's crazy. It is. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> mm. 
Well, what do you guys think about the pairing so far? I'm very nervous. The pairing is bringing out the sweetness of the tobacco to me. Mm -hmm. uh, it, usually, it, without the drink, it's a little more spicy, mm -hmm. that sweetness, earth. But with the drink, it kind of just takes the spice away and, and brings a little bit more of the sweetness out of the tobacco. Except no, for the I retro agree. ale. The retro is... Well, the retro, Bumping. yes, but because your sensories are opened up and that's just going to be a, you know, yeah. but yes, but on, the, on a normal, ex <laughs> could you get that, Dave? Yep. On the normal <laughs> exhale, <laughs> the spice kind of just gets muted and the sweetness just come, just pops right out. I noticed that right away as well. Right. Like the second I tried the cigar and then took a sip of the whiskey, you're getting those sweet flavors from the mm. tobacco yep. and it's pairing with those like kind of sweet caramel fruity notes from the whiskey. Mm-hmm. All right, so so far I'm doing pretty good, Nick. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> He's trying to defrost from go. a couple hours of being outside selling. Uh, that yes, very much so. Uh, <laughs> sweet nuts. <laughs> Say what? <Okay. laughs> on an open fire. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, on, sweet on the cigar, nuts. yeah, on the cigar, I'm getting some sweet, like nutty, earthy. The spice is kind of playing a little on the uh, the spice is playing a backseat. You definitely get it in the retro hail, but it's it's for me and my palate. It's kind of playing. You know, it's just it's hard because it's the the sweetness, maybe a little bit of the the cocoa in there, and the mm. earthy, and then I getting like nuttiness in there too. Dave, are you uh, picking up any nuts? I'm not picking up any nuts. <laughs> Put, put down your phone down. and pick up your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> feel free to speak. This is an audio <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting some earth and some uh, maybe a little bit of leather. Um, I'm retro hailing every puff. You're I'm crying I'm, too. I'm loving that. Well, I'm loving the uh, the retro hail. Mm. It's been wonderful. Yeah, the retro hail on this oh. cigar is fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> the the Tabernacle Havana Seed is my favorite cigar from Nick Melillo. Wow. I know, uh, Paul, yours is the uh, wise man, still the, the Maduro version of the uh, uh, Eloense, but this, to me, is the best thing he's ever made. I love this cigar. I could smoke it all day long. Um, and the Corona is a little bit more intense than the other sizes. Mm -hmm. Um, that smaller ring gauge just lets you, I think, enjoy the wrapper and the intenseness that he was talking about on the website a little bit more than the other uh, sizes do. But um, I, I really pick up the, the kind of chocolatey cocoa notes in the drink, and that just totally brings out the sweetness of the cigar. I'm totally getting that. Um, I can't tell myself if the spiciness is toned down in the cigar, um, but I retrohale pretty often too, so um, my nose is telling me there's plenty of spice in there. Right. My tear ducts are telling me that too. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, well, good. So Talia, t tell us a little bit about yourself. You're you're the the rep for this uh, you know incredible company how did how did you get uh, hooked up into that so it was actually sort of lucky on my part where i was doing restaurants for a long time and bouncing around job to job totally random things and my dad's friend works for this company and said hey if Tully's looking for a job have her apply for this one so no bar experience whatsoever. I was always in the kitchen. Mm. You know, no sales experience whatsoever. But I went and met with, you know, my managers and the GM and everything. And they liked my personality. They were like, this chick, she's awesome. She's got, <laughs> she can talk. She's a little bit, you know, feisty. She's got the attitude, but she's also fun and nice. So mm -hmm. they decided to give me a chance. And, you know, a year and a half later, I'm still doing it. And I'm winning trips here and there. And my numbers are always awesome. So, hey, it's obviously a good fit. That's great. What? what now, what uh, territory do you have? So my territory ranges from Concord down to Nashua out to Keene and sort of everything in between. So kind of that southern New Hampshire yeah, you know, they call it Central. Central New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah, so there's another, you know, there's only three reps in New Hampshire. One chick's got the North, one guy's got the 
Seacoast, and mm. I have everything else. Okay. So I have the most popular and busy territory, which is nice for me. Cause well, you have twins. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course. Of course. I mean, <laughs> I will never say Life no to whiskey and cigars. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you, obviously, I think people, if you haven't figured out, she is smoking the cigar along with us. How, how did you get into cigars? My uncle's. Your Straight uncle's. Straight off the boat, Greek. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Cigars, you know, so every family party, all they're, yep, they're drinking, mm-hmm. they're smoking cigars, so I've been taking sneaking puffs and sneaking sips since I was eight or nine years old, so nice. <laughs> always nice. smoke cigars, always drank whiskey, just sort of a cultural thing, I suppose. And, um, you know, you, you come here a fair amount of time, mm-hmm. right, to, to have sure. a cigar or drink upstairs? Yeah, my fiance and I actually came here for Valentine's Day a couple years ago, which was awesome because <laughs> there was nobody here, so it was just the two of us and a few other people, and we had the run of the place. It was great. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, now, what do you think of the, the pairing here? I actually, I like it a lot, so sort of what Nick was saying was I actually got the sweetness mm-hmm. from the cigar right away when I was drinking the whiskey. So mm. I started drink, smoking the cigar before taking a sip, mm-hmm. just so I could taste it before sure. the whiskey. Yep. And spicy immediately. Mm-hmm. But the minute I started drinking the whiskey, the sweetness started coming out. Mm-hmm. So it almost smoothed it out for me, Yeah. drinking yep. the whiskey and smoking the cigar at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it made it even you know more pleasurable to smoke while drinking the whiskey. And it made everything kind of fit together real and, smooth. And that says something, because this is a pretty smooth cigar mm-hmm. on its own. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I, I, I do think the smaller ring gauge makes it a little bit more intense, maybe a little bit less appreciating the smoothness that you might get in the Robusto or the Toro um, because of the extra ring gauge there. But it, it, is, just so, it is just such a creamy cigar, mm-hmm. and it's rich and creamy. Yeah. And... It just, uh, you know, the the strength the strength of the body of the cigar and uh, the Jefferson Ocean here are like a perfect match. You're really getting to enjoy all the flavors of, of both. Um, this is really this is really incredible. So, do you have any idea what possessed people to say what would happen if we took this stuff and just shipped it around the world on a ship. And yes. What difference would that make? Let's just sure. go do that. What? Where did that idea come from? So, actually, what happened was one of the owners of the Jefferson Distillery. He's friends with the you know captain of mm. one of these O Search ships. Mm-hmm. So he went with him just on a trip for no reason. Just hey, let's go hang out, sail on your boat, catch some star- sharks, whatever. And he had bottles of bourbon that were sitting on the deck, and they were sloshing around. Okay. So he yep. was watching the whiskey slosh around in the bottles, and he says, you know what? If we put the, the barrel on here, it's going to slosh around the same way. Let's see what happens. So they sent five barrels out on the next trip to kind of test it out, mm-hmm. and they ended up loving it and created a whole new line just for the purpose. That's crazy. How long are they at sea for? It depends. It's, it really depends on their trip. So it could be months, it could be a year, um, but where you're, say it's out for a year, it has that same age quality as a bourbon that's been sitting for 10 years in a warehouse. That's wow. interesting. That's really that's so is the So is the ocean, uh, so it could be literally out there for a year or two years? Yeah, there's, it really honestly depends on the voyage. So if you buy a bottle, it will have a voyage number on it so oh. right now we're drinking voyage mm-hmm. number 17 mm-hmm. and it'll come with a tag on it that will give you all of the information on that voyage so mm-hmm. it'll tell That's you sweet. where they went the climate conditions if there was a storm you know what the temperature was what the wind conditions were so every single voyage is going to taste a little bit different Yeah, because all of that would affect Right, right. Exactly. even where you are near the equator, right? Mm-hmm. As, as yeah. gravity increases and decreases, that would affect it too, right? Exactly. <laughs> that's so, insane. if you try a bourbon that's just been distilled, hasn't even touched a barrel, it's going to taste vastly different than a bourbon that's even been aged six months in a barrel sitting in a warehouse. Mm. So, if you try a bourbon that's been sitting six months on a ship, it's going to be even more different. So, that wood is mm. what's giving it the quality. And the environmental factors give it even more flavor. 
That's awesome. Shake it, baby. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How many voyages do you currently have? I honestly, I don't know. There, There's been so many. I'd say 20s, 30s. It's, it's not anything that we particularly know, where every once in a while they'll just be like, oh, here's the new voyage. So... When you buy a bottle at the store, you're going to know what number it is, and it's mm-hmm. going to give you all the information. Now, obviously, each, you know, because of all those, you know, variables when you're traveling around the world, you know, like you've already said, none of these are going to be exactly the same. Is it a noticeable difference between batches to you, or is that something that really somebody with a, a really good educated palate is going to be able to pick up? But Regular Joe Schmo is probably not. Yes, I would assume that somebody, who, you know, somebody who just kind of drinks bourbon, mm-hmm. they might not be able to tell the difference between voyages. Even sometimes, if I was to try like sixteen versus seventeen, mm-hmm. possibly not a vast difference. It's going to be subtle differences that really experienced palates are going to notice. So they are different, of course, but it might not vary the taste so much so there is a there, yeah it. so there is a kind of a consistency exactly. you know with these you're still getting the saltiness those caramel notes mm-hmm. and it's going to be subtle differences mm. how do those salty caramel notes which i totally get from Absolutely, this yeah. how are you seeing them work with the cigar well it, it's <clears throat> not necessarily the saltiness of it it's it's just the 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 overall David, you're not allowed to say salt. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think overall, it, it's it's help. It's just bringing out more of the sweetness in the tobacco. I'm not noticing any real uh, salty caramel on the uh, with the uh, with the cigar in terms of how it's how, how it's not changing it, but how it's uh, pairing with it. It's just bringing out the sweetness of the tobacco it's 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 muting the the spice for me um well there's a there's a sweet almost chocolatey kind of earthiness to this to this cigar right a lot of that comes from the san andreas that that Mm -hmm. is the binder yeah and that salty caramel to me just totally plays with that and i think that's one of the reasons it brings out the sweetness um you know that you know i think it's i think it's almost bringing out the san andreas in the cigar. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Or am I just yeah. like I was impressed. talking crack? Yeah. Yeah. No, I was impressed. Because yeah. when we met earlier, mm-hmm. you said this might be a good yeah. cigar to pair with it. And it was. Mm. So you know your stuff. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I've learned from the potion master. <laughs> I'm her little Padawan when it comes to pairing things. I suppose you are. Nick, what, what are you thinking about this now that uh. you're a little bit further along? And I'm actually impressed that you still have some in your glass. Very good. Man. You're learning to pace yourself. I'm trying to be on my best behavior. I really, Uh-oh. world really, the really, room, folks. really am. That usually doesn't <laughs> I'm really trying to be on my best behavior. But with the salt. <laughs> you can say salt, Nick. I can say salt. Yes. Okay. With the salt, uh-huh. the the the, the, the little bit of salt that I'm getting there with the salted caramel, it definitely is bringing out the sweet chocolate note Ooh. in the cigar. But also, now that I'm a good ways down, it is the salt is actually for me bringing out a little bit of the leather mm. that you can get in there, which I always kind of. S- in a lot of the heavier cigars that you will get some leather it does um for me it does bring out a little bit of the salt when you taste that leather note in there it's a little little salty a little tangy and that's what is kind of bringing it out a little bit more with that sweetness and everything yeah i'm about halfway through too and i, I would agree with nick that the uh i am picking up a little bit of leather and a little bit more of the earth in the uh in the cigar you know with the help of the ocean mm. Dave I feel that the sodium chloride that I'm getting <laughs> <laughs> that I'm getting from the drink is really bringing out the leather profile on the cigar as well as the uh, burnt sugar 
<laughs> well oh, said, sir. Wow, I am super oh. impressed. Well said. Did you like write that out on your yeah, phone and read it? <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. That was very good. Well said, sir. Mm. Well, while we're smoking and drinking here and getting a little further down, let's tell you a little bit about what's going on here at Twins Cigar Wise over the next uh, month or so. Um, uh, next week, we're doing a Rocky Patel event here, January 31st at the London Dairy Store from 4 to 9 p.m. It's really going to be launching a several-month um, event that will culminate in Rocky Patel actually being here at the store. Nice. We're very excited about that. We did this last year with him, and it was a fantastic, fantastic mm-hmm. event. Um, uh, we ended up... Uh, giving away tickets to a Red Sox game with with Rocky Ooh. Patel. Nick actually went along with that. I did, as yes. As I recall, you had a really good time. It was Ish. it was a really, really good time. I'm not a big baseball fan. Yeah. Because um, I played football for, mo- uh, for most of my life. But um, just being at the stadium, also we got to hang out with Orlando Cabrera of yeah. the Red Sox. He's awesome. Orlando is an amazing, down-to-earth individual. Yeah. He will talk to literally about anything and um hang with him hanging with the uh all of rocky patel the rep kurt was there the two guests that won the tickets and we took a limo ride there nice. uh, we sat in a, a presidential box it was unbelievable it was a really great time and all the food i can eat yes <laughs> you, you had a lot of steak as i recall i had three filet mignons Ooh, wow a lot of steak, bro. I know, but it was so good. I, I bet. couldn't resist. That's why you had three of them. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah, oh, you want another? I was like, yes. I, uh, After that one, they're like, you want another? Twice. I was like, yes, I want another. <laughs> wow. And uh, then we're doing a uh, hammer and sickle event in February, February 13th at our Hooks at location. Yay. And then uh, um, February 21st at our London Dairy location, both from 4 to 9 p.m., Eric Wentworth from Hammer and Sickle will be here. Uh, Eric is an awesome guy, and Hammer and Sickle makes fantastic cigars, including the one that uh, my brother David is uh, infatuated with because of its saltiness. Sodium chloride. It's Yes. (laughs) And then uh, another thing that's going on is um, we're doing a Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust uh, event. Uh, March 19th in Hooksit and March 27th Yay. here at London Dairy from 4 to 9. And um, we're actually starting, the reason I mention it is we're starting something now that you can get involved with that will make that event, which is a couple months away, a little bit more special. You can get a three pack of uh, Dunbarton cigars for $30. And uh, that's a about a twenty-five dollars, a twenty-five dollar, twenty-five percent savings over buying the cigars individually. But in that little pack is a ticket, and that ticket, if you bring it to the event on those days, uh, the nineteenth in Hooksit and the twenty-seventh in Londonderry, you will be able to redeem that ticket for twenty dollars off any box of Steve Saka's cigars that you would like. Oh, yeah. And you will get a drink pairing with a cigar with that ticket. So you can do one, you can do the other, you can do both, but there are only 50 of these packs in existence, and the people who buy those will be the ones who are able to take advantage of that special $20 savings and (coughs) special pairing which Kendra will no doubt knock out of the park um, as she almost is guaranteed to do whenever we ask her to do something. So that is something you do not want to miss. You can stay in touch with Twin Smoke Shop on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and of course at twinssmokeshop.com. Now, are you guys picking up anything else yeah, with <coughs> the with a cigar or the drink or the pairing or both, the whatever. Pa- the pairing's bringing out more of the chocolate in the cigar. Absolutely. Now that I'm probably halfway done, at yeah, least. Yeah, you're almost at the band. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm loving this pairing. I really am. I can't. I can't put the cigar down. I can 
I'm going to the drink every 30 seconds. This is my mm. second cigar, just so that everybody mm-hmm. knows. <laughs> but it's absolutely uh, an outstanding pairing. Um, it's uh, Even though the cigar has changed a little bit, it's just still bringing out more sweetness. Mm, awesome. Explain awesome. I was commenting to Paul. Oh, well, tell me more. I'm, 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 you know, soaking it all up here. No, I was listening to him, and I was trying to say, I was like, I was thinking to myself, am I getting that? I'm like, I can totally get the, uh, the little bit more cocoa notes out of the, uh, out of the cigar. The um, sodium chloride in the in the drink is definitely bringing out more of the lighter profile on the cigar, which mm-hmm. is really nice. Um, oh, it's a great pairing. Good job, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> My head's getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Tali, what, what are, are you picking up anything else on the cigar here? No, I agree. The chocolate notes are coming through a little bit more. Like, the more you smoke, the more you drink, yeah. more chocolatey. More of that cocoa mm-hmm. comes Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is just one of my favorite highlights of this cigar. It's just, um, you know, it's it's nice. It's a strong medium. It's not like a medium plus. It's like a strong medium cigar. Um, nice, rich flavors. Those earthy, leathery, uh, cocoa kind of notes. It's... And... The wrapper on this cigar is so nice and oily. It's it's just amazing. It's not overwhelming. You're not getting no. that overwhelming smoky quality while you're drinking and tasting the cigar. It matches perfect. Nick, are you still awake? Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the smoke kind of sit in his mustache and beard. It doesn't really go anywhere. It just kind of, it's just like a fog. It just takes a minute to be able to see his face again. It's like... <laughs> I'm not shaving. I'm not shaving. You don't have to shave it. I ain't shaving either. You could tame the mane. You know what they say? I'm not shaving (laughs) at all. Um, Just the cocoa notes just coming through a lot more. Everyone is saying cocoa. 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 Coconuts. Coconuts. Coconuts? Mm, I love coconuts. Um, Not coconuts, but uh, it's really coming through a little bit more. The, The... the spice on the retro hills kind of calmed down a little bit mm-hmm. so you kind of right now for me it's a little bit of a nice balance of the cocoa and the leather that's mm-hmm. in there um and the drink is bringing wow. that out more and more really really nice mm. that a boy dead thank you the only the only add a boy i have not won is kendra because she's not smoking the cigar she's not <laughs> she needs to smoke but i'm one. proud of you for this all together. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Thank you. I do have a challenge for Kendra, though. Oh. 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 Kendra Ooh. challenge. Challenge Ooh. accepted. All to the table. I would like to see how many bottles of ocean with different voyages she can find out there in New Hampshire. Ooh. Bring them back yeah. in, and we'll we'll get Tally to come back Ooh. in, and we'll line them all up. Compare. And we'll compare like and see it. what the differences are with the cigar That's as well. Nuts. Welcome to the I Voyage like Show. This will be, be our tour. <laughs> this, will, this, this will be Talia Ocean Part 2. Ooh, I love it. I like it. Spicy. You, 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 up, you up for that challenge? <laughs> Kendra, you up for that challenge? Um, yeah, but she's going to have to tell me when the different voyages are about to appear. She, I don't, do you even know? Nope. She I know, will so. let you know when I find out. That's <laughs> it. So you may be on the I'll road a little while, posted. Kendra. <laughs> <laughs> on the road again. I love going from Lincoln to Lincoln. There you my go. Favorite thing to do, especially if it's on my day off. <laughs> hey. Get Lisa involved. Yeah. We'll take a day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah. take a day. We'll take a trip. We'll, we'll go do a day. <laughs> you know, we'll do not just blowing smoke day trip. <laughs> oh, the best we'll, way we'll call, on the road. We'll call Dave from the Cigar Hacks. We'll borrow the the we'll Escuro borrow the limo. We'll, we'll borrow the limo. We'll have a. We'll record the show in the limo, and we'll go from liquor store to liquor store <laughs> with Kendra. I'm and we'll Kendra make on the road. and we'll yeah. we'll we'll have uh, we'll have Kurt drive the limo. <laughs> 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 huh? Dave will do it. He'll 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 he'll, he'll, he'll drive it. it. Oh, he'll love an doing it. cigar limo. Yeah, he yeah. has a limo. It's the they call it the Escoro. It's a black eight passenger limo. The you get to smoke. <laughs> you get to smoke and drink in. That's a good name. It, it is. is. Sounds like heaven. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Those guys are great. So what's what's our final thoughts on the uh, uh, Tabernacle Havana Seed Connecticut One Forty Two Corona? Yum. Just give Dan some more compliments. Mm-hmm. Final thoughts. 
Just on it. Excellent. Is this the best? <laughs> <laughs> huh? This. Does it beat the penicillin? This. This. I don't know. This is a this is a very good pairing. I don't think it beats the penicillin. I don't. I don't think. That, I don't think two different Danny, things. Altogether. It's a different thing. Yeah, it, it, I don't, I don't up, think for a straight up bourbon, for, this is fan, absolutely fantastic. Oh yeah, I have nothing against. For a, for I have a nothing against mixed cocktail. Bourbon. I think the penicillin. Fire absolutely. Beats but as far as the pairing, as far as the pairing right, goes, yep. I think I think it's it's definitely a good pairing. But it doesn't for me. It doesn't match up to the to the penicillin and, I, and we I would agree with that. I would probably going to have to take second place on that, that one, my that, friend. That penicillin was, that Kendra made. So I'm going to go upstairs and make the cocktail now. Please do. Okay. Um, very great pairing. Cigar, one of my favorites. It's been one of my favorites since it came out. Mm. This is just fantastic. Well, this is this is my favorite bourbon. Ever. You've always had expensive taste, Dave. So... This, this nothing is wrong with that? No, nothing wrong at all. <laughs> we gotta get you. Uh, we gotta. If you said this is great, you gotta get you some Booker's bourbon, and uh, we'll see how you see how you like that. I'm comfortable with the oceans. <laughs> <laughs> if you like the ocean, try the cask strength. So Ooh. this is 90 proof. Cask strength is about 110 proof. That's it. Is it a cask strength ocean? Yes, sir. Ooh. Bring that down right yeah. now. I Why aren't it. we doing that? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I bring in what she tells me. Kendra's the boss. Mm, all right. Well, all right. We'll blame Kendra. Strength, yeah, it goes a little over 100 proof, usually 110, 120. Oh. So it doesn't have that dilution when they bottle it. I love that. I love it when it hits you, though. Mm. When you're drinking like 120, 130 bourbon. Mm. Mm-hmm. Man. That's a be careful bourbon. No. That's yeah. what I like to call that. Yeah. That's your first sip. You're like on a roller coaster for me. Like when I'm drinking like Booker's, because Booker hover, hovers around 128, 132. So when I'm drinking, the first sip is like going up the roller coaster, and then that second sip, yeah, that second sip, you're plummeting down, and you just like, oh yes, it's mm-hmm. just beautiful. The be careful bourbon. Oh, I'm Not always too careful. Much, just that. I always Perfect have a full enough. glass of that stuff. Ooh, <laughs> it's so good. Well, if anyone listened to, to the. Um, top five episode we did a few episodes back um you you'll know that uh, the this cigar is in my top five for sure time favorite cigars mm. and um i was when when they gave me the 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 tasting a few weeks ago of the of the ocean this popped right into my head saying oh i know exactly what we're gonna uh, offer as a pairing up at the bar with this and um now I had not had the cigar with the whiskey then, but now that I now that I've done that, uh, this is just this is this was really good. It worked out really really oh, well. Oh yeah, what did it take pleased. you ten seconds to figure out this cigar yeah, with it? This, once you tasted this it? was great. So yeah. now I'm I'm interested to see if the the pipe tobacco is going to work. Yeah, just, you know just as well. But uh, oh, we'll yeah. see about that. That's coming up in the second half of not just blowing smoke. All right, we are back for part two of uh, Not Just Blowing Smoke, and we are smoking GLP's Stonehenge. And uh, from the tin, it says, uh, we have a quote first from GLP's and then an actual description. And so uh, I have no idea what GLP sounds like, but uh, in my best uh, GLP's impression... In 2001, I had the honor and pleasure of collaborating with G.H. and Co.'s John Gawith on a very special tobacco, and after nearly a year of development, Stonehenge Flake, a modern Virginia Perique blend steeped in English tradition, was born. End quote. And then it says, uh, fine Virginias are layered with Louisiana Pourique and just a touch of burley for added body and a fuller flavor, then steamed, hot-pressed, and matured. The cakes are thinly sliced and tinned, ready for your smoking pleasure. Today, 
and for many years to come. Hmm. This is manufactured by Cornell and Deal, who, of course, manufactures all of GOP's blends. It's a Virginia Perique uh, blend. Uh, Virginia Perique Burley. There's a little bit of uh, chocolate topped on this uh, tobacco. It's a flake cut, like uh, uh, was described in the uh, on the tin description there. And we are again doing a Jefferson related pairing with this. And um, I don't know who to ask. Should I ask you about the Jefferson, or should I ask you because it's an old fashioned? So tell me, about, about tell bourbon. tell us tell yeah. us a little bit about the bourbon, the Jefferson bourbon that is uh, in this drink we are enjoying. Sure. So this is a Jefferson's very small batch, is what they call it. It's their base level whiskey. So it's a very approachable whiskey. It starts out with kind of peachy sweet notes. It's kind of merging into these like citrusy flavors, and you're finishing off with the classic vanilla flavors of mm. a bourbon. So with Kendra's Old Fashioned, you're getting those sweet notes that are pairing really nice with the actual bourbon. Mm. And she's finishing it off with like a vanilla. You're doing the vanilla cherry bitters and doing a brown sugar symbol, which I think actually works a lot better than a regular simple syrup because Mm. the brown sugar gives it a little bit of a spicier quality. So it's making this Old Fashioned... A little bit more intricate, a little mm-hmm. more complex than a typical old fashioned, which I think pairs perfect with the Jefferson's base level, which is mm. perfect for cocktails. Anything you want to add to that, Kendra, Potion Master? Sure. So, just um, sampling some of the tobacco, and I took a couple sips of Nick's drink. He hates me right now. Um, <laughs> it's it's totally vanilla forward. Mm. So, um, so yeah, I think. You know, I was a little bit worried that it would be too sweet, but I Mm. think it works really nice. It brings out the vanilla, Mm -hmm. a little bit of cherry, um, completely mellows out. Like, it's smooth. Very smooth. Yeah, it is a very smooth drink. And um, it it would be easy to chug. (laughs) I'm feeling feeling the urge to be Nick and just go gulp. (laughs) (laughs) I'm almost there now. (laughs) You're almost there now. Um, So... What what do you guys think of the the tobacco going with this? How how is it? Is the drink is the sweetness of the drink too much, or is it is it bringing out the sweetness Excellent. of the tobacco and vice versa? <laughs> was that you, or did, was that the soundboard? That was that was Dave playing the soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, that was I'm, his exact thought. <laughs> <laughs> It's 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 bringing out a lot more of the the fruit and the mm-hmm. and the tobacco. It's mm-hmm. and on the X, I'm oh, sorry, on the retro hail. Now without the drink, you get that nice light spice. Mm-hmm. But with the drink, it's actually adding more sweetness. So I'm actually getting a sweet spice on the mm-hmm. retro hail, which mm-hmm. is fantastic. What do you think, Nick? I'm almost getting from the drink, even though I know it's not. Almost like a sweet liqueur, almost. Mm. But it's. I know it's not, but it's it's really kind of bringing out the sweetness, and then you get that spice, like Paul said, from the retro hill. So it's like that nice, sweet, and spicy in there. Really nice. Medium body. Yeah. Really, really good. Straight on medium body. Mm. Incredibly smooth. Yes. yes. Very smooth. Dave, what are you uh, picking up? Um, the sweet the sweet liqueur is uh, it's really bringing out the fruit <coughs> and the tobacco. Um, the retro hill is super smooth. Like a creamy pepper, I'm mm. getting. It's really pepper is probably too much of a word for it. Maybe mm-hmm. like a, I don't know, just uh, in between a pepper and a spice, but it's really smooth. White pepper, lighter, I think. Than All that, spice. Mm, no pa- paprika. <laughs> paprika. Um, but yeah, the pairing is really well. Good job, Dan. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so Talia is having to leave but she's taking her drink with her i'm taking my drink but i'm leaving the bottle oh oh (laughs) wonderful (laughs) god bless you talia yes Yes. you're a very good person i know pastor Pastor padron can you bless this young lady before she leaves oh Oh. you're blessed you 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 now have three free sins don't go waste them all (laughs) (laughs) thank you (laughs) 
Yes, <laughs> m- most people do. <laughs> Thank you so much for having They're me. They're already gone. Maybe we'll do something else soon. Absolutely. That would be awesome. Yeah, Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you, Kendra. Oh. Yes. I kicked the chair on my way out. Stonehenge, when it originally came out in 2001, was kind of a uh, limited run, uh, one and done kind of a thing. But uh, I think, especially with the uh, the FDA's, you know, uh, predicate stuff, you know, here was a great tobacco that they could bring back into regular mm-hmm. production. And um, Cornell and Deal uh, follows the uh, original recipe that uh, uh, GLPs and, and Sam Gawith put together. The, the tobaccos are from all over the place. And... Um, it's just a really beautiful medium bodied um, uh, tobacco and that that chocolate topping one of the things I love about Cornell and deal who uh, who uh, you know produces GLPs is that when they use a, a topping um, or a casing on a tobacco it's always meant to complement the tobacco it's never meant to be the thing so it's always a supporting player kind of thing and whatever they whatever they've added it's very very light yeah. it, it adds this little tinge it, it brings out the sweetness of the virginias which are very very naturally sweet in this blend yeah and um the you know when i tasted the um the the jefferson several weeks ago and was getting those peach notes Mm. and the vanilla finish on that this tobacco just totally came to my mind because that those sweet fruity notes from the virginias which are so evident in this so deep and rich i i just felt that those those kind of flavors would really complement uh what was offered in the tobacco yeah i'm really getting a peach note off the drink too now that you say that Mm. yeah totally is anyone else picking up the peach off the drink too a tad bit yeah a little bit but it's also what it's also doing too in my last drawer of the tobacco after i had the uh the drink it's Mm. i can actually get just a little bit of that chocolate Mm -hmm. just just a slight bit yeah it's it's excellent it's a it's a hint and danny when you were you were before we started the second half (laughs) <laughs> Before you started the second half, you were reading off the, 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 the blend and the ingredients mm-hmm. and stuff like that of mm-hmm. the tobacco, and I was like, oh, it's a vapor, and then you went into it, and you said they had the chocolate topping and all these other stuff, and I'm like, oh, I might not like this, mm. and I, my brain kind of came in, it, it, you know, was thinking about it, and I was like, man, like, it's going to have all this stuff and then chocolate on the top of it. I'm like, it may be just too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, this may be a tobacco that I may not like. Mm-hmm. And just like you said, the to, you know the chocolate really <laughs> plays a way, way, way back seat to yes. it. Yeah. And it's it just kind of peeks in just a tad bit yep. just to say hi and then bye. Yeah. And that's it. And it, I'm very pleased with it that they do it that way. And it's, mm-hmm. it's incredible that, like you said, they... When they do it, it's not overwhelming. Mm-hmm. It's not something that's going to uh, overshadow the rest of the tobaccos that they're using in the blend. It's very, very subtle. It's there just to kind of a slight compliment to the others. Yeah, it's it really just kind of brings out what's naturally already right. there. Yeah, yeah. and um, that's just really that's just really good, uh, and I think a sign of really quality yeah. Um, blending. Yeah. Um, so. I'm I'm really enjoying this pairing, and and again, there's a whole there's a world of difference between tasting the the Jefferson bourbon, and then getting it in an old fashioned, and um, so I you know really I had not experienced this with the tobacco, um, but man, it's it's just really good, you know the 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 sweetness of the drink is not too sweet yeah it's a very sweet drink but it is not too sweet for the tobacco right and it really just <clears throat> i think makes the virginias in here shine mm-hmm. and that um that figgy raisiny quality of the tobacco uh, from the perique just really plays well with these other with these other flavors right, mm. exactly, yeah. the, the virginias are absolutely the most dominant ones mm. here that 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 tr- sweet dry fruit Mm-hmm. is just excellent. Mm. 
yeah. It is excellent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like an echo in here. We got an echo chamber going mm. on right now. This, this, this. <laughs> yeah, there's an echo chamber for you. It's great. It <clears throat> is. It's, it, between the the tobacco and 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 the cocktail is just mm. another home run that Kendra keeps hitting, mm-hmm. and um, it's again. The, the the sweetness of the drink is not too sweet for me it's probably just before the limit mm-hmm. between it's just too sweet mm-hmm. you know what i mean like you get like um like i used to drink grand manier i used to drink that straight up really yeah i used to drink grand manier straight up and that is like a mm-hmm. sweet mm-hmm. orange liqueur mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that like you can get tired of it really, really quick. Like, you can probably maybe have, like, two drinks of that, and then you'd be just like, okay, just give me some bourbon or whiskey to wash it down. But um, you were doing 750s. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was <laughs> what I was. What possessed you to do that? Um, do you really like orange? Well, I do. I love oranges. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to try it. Mm-hmm. It was my, actually, it was my, uh, my wife's grandmother that kind of turned me on to it. She loves Grand Marnier. Mm. And... Um, if you drink in, I don't know if it's throughout the whole Spanish culture, but I know with my in-laws, it's like Grand Manier and something else after dinner settles your stomach. Mm. Um, and they would drink that a lot. Mm. Like my grandmother's, uh, my wife's grandmother drank it a lot. So <laughs> I was. What were they cooking that they needed their stomach settled so? Much, oh man! So was, often after dinner, <laughs> it was it was like sancocho and. Platanos and rice and beans and stuff like that. Your traditional mm-hmm. Spanish meals. Mm. Um, but she got me into that, and I was drinking that. And that, for me, was like the the limit to drinking something sweet. Like, that. You that's probably one of the sweetest things I've had. So this doesn't really quite compare to that, but that's like... Like, this is almost to the limit, so it's almost really really too sweet but just enough sweet to really really satisfy your palate yeah yeah i agree Mm. um uh let's do a little bit of uh pastor padron cigar confessions i realize we're in the second half of the show but um i wanted to really focus on talia and and uh conversation in the first half um it's still January. I know it's not the beginning of January, but um, you know, as, as uh, we were thinking about what to uh, talk about, you know, this is still kind of the month where people tend to make resolutions, even if it's not to make any resolutions, which might be the only resolution people keep. Mm. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's um, true. But uh, I, I think it's something that, you know, I can really appreciate being on the podcast here where um, every week we're trying a different cigar I, I really and a different pipe tobacco too uh, I really hope that one of the things that uh, our listeners are getting from this podcast is the, the desire to branch out and try things mm. that you have not yet tried before I know that um, you know there are um, pipe smokers here who you know they love the um uh, um oh what's it the luxury luxury navy flake from peter stokeby yeah and that's almost all they smoke and they buy you know the equivalent of maybe a pound a month you know yes. mm-hmm. you know week by week you know when you add it all up yeah you know and or, there's nothing wrong with that it's a fantastic or the tobacco la- or the lane one q or lane one q oh, which my. you know we call granite state mm. you know people buy that by the pound and, oh god yeah and um you know that's an incredible uh, tobacco Ooh, excuse me if you like a nice light aromatic oh that's it's got great. this beautiful vanilla note to it you know, and we've got people who, of course, you know, the Fuente is their favorite thing, or Padron is their favorite thing. Um, let me tell you something. There is so much good stuff out there. Uh, and my fellow brothers and sisters of the Leaf, this year, make a resolution to branch out and try some different things, because chances are 
you will be amazed. And and also too to to speak on that, and you know, don't be afraid to smoke a cigar and 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 kind of be disappointed in the cigar or not like it. Um, we get a lot. I get a lot of people that come into the shop and they're always you know if they're always smoking the same thing whether it be Roma Craft, De Fuente, CLE or, or whatever, Perdomo 724 um, you know what I mean, I always try to branch them out into something different because I, I smoke everything in here and you know it's and, and not a surprise to you guys um you know, so I, I smoke everything under the sun, so I kind of know. That's that's tobacco. Yes, <laughs> strictly. I mean, you don't smoke your, your car tires, right? Well, you it know, hasn't I gotten do, to that I point do, yet. I do some. <laughs> Luckily, I, we have know, a good selection. I do, I do some uh, <laughs> neutral drops one of the one, once in a while. Oh my god! But uh, but yeah, you know what I mean. I try to have the guy. You know, some of these guys branch out, and a lot of them tell me the same thing is. Well, this one's consistent, so I stay. I, I don't want to branch out and be disappointed. And I think that's kind of the the cigar experience. You know what I mean? You're gonna you're branching into something, into a realm that's unknown to you, and yep. it might be something that you're not used to. But I think you know, giving it a, you know, give it a, a fair chance and see what it is because you never know. You know, if you're gonna pick up. Uh, a diamond crown or an LFD or a CLE or, you know, um, a my father or a tatuaje and you don't smoke that on a regular basis and you just might like it. If you don't, I'm sorry that I gave you, a, uh, uh, you know, sold you a, a cigar that you don't like, but you know what? You tried something new, branch out, think, you know, grab something and smoke it. So I, I would, I would take it, uh, <clears throat> a little bit more, a little further and say like I challenged Kendra to uh, mm. get us as many voyages of the ocean <laughs> as she possibly could it's going to be interesting <laughs> on that challenge but I, I, I as far as a resolution to our listeners too I would uh, <clears throat> ask them to if you if you are a Connecticut shade cigar smoker try a Maduro version mm. we've got many lines that offer a similar experience similar type of uh, body that come in both a Connecticut and a Maduro. Like the trademark Maduros. Are great. Trademark Maduros, great. the, the, the Chata Oak Maduros, mm-hmm. the Fuente, uh, the, the Chateau and Double Chateau come in Sun Grown Maduro and the Connecticut Jade. The, mm-hmm. Even the Ashens the have leaf. the Ashen Age Maduros. Mm-hmm. You know, change it up. You, you, like, you nip, like, I'll, go, I'll take my own personal experience. Like I said, like 25 years ago, I was hooked on CAO Cameroons. Mm-hmm. And then it took a Maduro for me to branch out, and now you know, now look at me. He's Pablo Maduro. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, again, so, <laughs> and I, but I, I have not really gone back to the Cameroons in quite a few years. I mean, every once in a while, I'll have one here and there. Yep. But, uh, but again, just just try something different. If you come in and want to buy a few sticks, that's fine. If you want to buy a few of your own, but at the end of the day, try something different. You know, ask us. We'll 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 steer you in the right direction. Right. And on a further note. If you are a mild cigar smoker and have been for a number of years, try something that might be like a mild to medium or even a medium cigar. Another good suggestion is, too, is like uh, people are like, what's new? You know, I wanted something different. Uh, the first place I bring them over to is the TAA section, you mm-hmm. know, because that's like trusted brands, but like, you know, that's like something off the beaten path. You know, it's True. a great place to try and safely branch out because yeah. those are all fantastic cigars. And they're, they're not everywhere either. You yeah. only have 82 retailers in the United States that have TAAs, and we're one of them. Yep. Us and Hooks, yeah? Yep. Almost every line has a, a Connecticut shade, a Maduro shade, or yeah. some other mm-hmm. type of shade. Absolutely. So just just put forth a little bit of effort and a little bit of willingness on your part to to try something different and you never know you, you may actually find your next favorite cigar yeah mm-hmm. you could be and uh, hold on sorry i want to harken back um harken. i want to harken back harken harken um all right that's gotten weird uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but even the people that don't want to change their 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 smoking or strength profile we have hundreds of Connecticut's from different brands in there. Mm-hmm. So if you're somebody that 
is just that you don't you don't necessarily have to jump up to a Sun Grown or a Habano or a Maduro or San Andreas whatever. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, every brand comes out with a Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Every brand that we have has a Connecticut and a good Connecticut because I smoked most of them. So because you smoke everything. Because I smoke everything. Um, but give it to Nikki. He smokes everything. Yes. <laughs> um, but you can. Nikki you likes can, it. You can do that. <laughs> oh, I like it all. Um, uh-huh. But you can you can jump into e- any Connecticut that's out there. You know what I mean. So yeah. and for me, they all taste a little bit different. Well, that's good. That's that's and that's part of the diversity of the whole the whole world of cigars, and and that travels right over into the pipe tobacco too. You know, I've I've uh, had customers who. Um, uh, English blends uh, were their thing, and really because they like a fuller-bodied tobacco, and that's where they that's where they would go. And when you start to open up, and you you know uh, start to experience a really good fuller-bodied non-Latakia tobacco like Escudo or um, GLP's Jackknife Plug or Cumberland or um, uh, Speakeasy uh, by Cornell and Deal, um, you start to realize that there's a whole other world of things out there that you might really like, um, and, and vice versa. You know, people who, you know, they they get scared of blends that have Latakia in it because, you know, maybe they smell the tin and go, ooh, what is what is that vinegary? vileness that yeah. I smell in there but you light it up and you smoke it and you realize this has nothing to do with what I yeah. smelled when I opened the tin and that's all that's usually that's usually the case with, with that I've that I've seen found out with the tins is that mm-hmm. you know some tins may have you know like you said the, that really pungent vinegary mm-hmm. smell to it but when you put it in your pipe and smoke it it's Glorious! Mm-hmm. All the flavors that rush to your palate, and you just have this awesome experience. You know what I mean. And then the one that's probably the most recognizable in the shop that smells like it smokes or smokes like it smells is Autumn Evening. Yeah, that one you smell it, you taste it. It's the same. <laughs> it's it's exactly the same. Mm-hmm. What you smell is what you're gonna taste, and. That's just great. It's 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 awesome. But mm. that's the the wonderful world of tobacco world, mm. especially in the in the in the pipe tobacco world. So now that we're probably about halfway through the bowl here, um, I've been puffing on my pipe a lot, and I have to give it a little rest. It's starting to get <laughs> hot. I'm enjoying it so much. Mm. What are you guys picking up as we get to the halfway point of the bowl? What kind of flavors are you getting? How is it? continuing to go or not go with the drink oh it's absolutely going very very well with the drink it's uh, like i said it's just bringing out some more more of that uh the the dry fruit and and just wonderful flavors from the tobacco very very smooth um the retrohale again is just that sweet spicy Mm. just minute flavors it's 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 really really good dave Mm. what about you Yep, the drink is still bringing out the um, Virginias for me. Um, getting a little bit of that of that peach from the drink is uh, really making the the dried fruit and the t- pipe tobacco uh, come alive. The retro hail is still incredibly smooth and uh, very enjoyable. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal. Mm. It's a great experience. And there is this kind of a I want to say I want to say sharp spice in the retro but it's not like a unpleasant kind of a sharp kind of like a sharp cheddar cheese you know is either there's a sharpness to it but it's not it's mm. not um, yeah unpleasant um, it's really really nice I don't quite know how to describe it other than that um, but the you know, there is this really deep, sweet stew fruit kind of taste to the to the Virginias here that this drink is just bringing forward. Yes. That 
uh, I don't think you normally get. I don't <coughs> normally get it anyway when I smoke this. Um, usually, I'm, I'm getting more. You know, I it, you still have that kind of rich dude fruit kind of thing in the background, but there's more um, of a fig and raisin kind of a taste that the perique brings to things, um, and then a tad of nuttiness that the that the burley brings. But that that's really kind of in the background for me. Though the burley is kind of, you know, in the background with the, with, with the drink, and uh, and it, it, while the perique I think still shows through in the retro hail with that spice. Really, what is playing up is is the Virginias, and it's just really really nice. I think that retro hail is like a, it's like a prolonged sharp smooth mm. you know it's a very it's it lingers a little bit mm. but it's not anywhere near as you know eye-watering as like other things are it's very smooth <laughs> like the retro of the uh the uh, tabernacle was at least for me that was it's some strong spicy stuff it wasn't always this really you know peppery spicy thing in the in the cigar but there were times where i retroed and it you know made my head kind of shake you were you're getting so much out of it um all right let me talk a little bit about uh what's going on here pipe wise while we continue to smoke here at uh, twin smoke shop and the first thing i want to say is that uh uh glps just came out with a brand new uh mix called spark plug and that has already landed here at twins smoke shop spark plug is a uh (laughs) english blend that uh comes as you might guess in the form of a plug um uh, very similar to gaslight but this plug uh is very very dense uh, it ain't no crumble cake. You're going to need a good, sharp knife to cut this stuff. Um, it is really, really dense. But um, They should if, call it Old Spark Plug. If you, if you like a good uh, Latakia forward, but very balanced um, uh, English blend, full-bodied English blend, Spark Plug is right for you. And... I highly recommend it. It's very, very good stuff. Um, we're having our next pipe club on uh, February 8th from 12 to 3 here at uh, the Londonderry location of Twins. And uh, we're going to be looking at Virginia blends uh, for that for that day. And it's going to be, we're, we're going to have four different Virginia blends that we're going to be talking about and smoking together. It's going to be a really good time. And, um, you know, at our last uh, Pipe Club earlier this month, we introduced something new called Pipe Club, Pipe Club Pub, which is a pairing class, uh, which is was put together by myself and Kendra to teach uh, participants how to pair spirits with their pipe tobacco and um, that uh, is a paid um, event that we do here and it is paid not because Kendra and I end up making more money but because uh, you get to have two pairings um, at the end of that class so you get the a whole introduction to pairing and why do it and how to do it and some of the nuts and bolts of that and then we offer four different pairings that Kendra and I have put together of uh, either spirits or cocktails with different pipe tobaccos and you get to choose two of those to try for the event Um, the cost for that is $25 and uh, you can sign up for that by uh, at our event page for that Pipe Club two, Pipe Club Pub Two on our Facebook page, or you can call in to the shop, or you can walk into the shop and say, "Hey, 
I want to sign up for Pipe Club Pub. There are 15 spaces available for that. We expanded it a little bit after last week. We, the last one sold out, and um, that was really, really awesome. And we had such a good time doing it. It was such a, a good event that we decided to do it again this time. And that will go from 3 to 4.30 up at the uh, 724 Lounge. Um, and that again is on Saturday, February 8th. So you can follow what's going on with us here, pipe wise, uh, at uh, Twins Pipe Club on Facebook and on Instagram. And the Instagram handle for that is Twins Pipe Club. So it's really easy for you. There shouldn't be any problem finding that out. All right. What are your continuing thoughts here on? Stonehenge by GLPs. I find it to be very relaxing. Um, I'm a, always been a big fan of Virginia's. Um, <coughs> the uh, the pairing is going really well with it, and uh, uh, the sweetness, like the peachiness that you're getting from the liquor, is uh, really bringing out the Virginia's. The uh, this creamy spice sharpness and the retro hail is intoxicating. Um, it's uh, excellent. Yeah, <laughs> good one, Paul. Well, I wish I had my uh, drink to continue the pairing with, but I finished that old fashioned about five minutes ago. So it was so good. Mm. Thank you, Kendra. Thank uh, you. But yeah. the uh, tobacco is on its own. Is just like I said, Dave hit it, it very relaxing incredibly relaxing uh <clears throat> just a tremendous amount of of sweetness and fruit from the virginias um just a little bit of that spice the retro hail I, I i would also say dan i i really don't know exactly what else is with that retro hail. i'm picking up something else but i can't figure it out what it is either mm. but uh it again it's just a, a, an excellent blend i'm really enjoying this Nick, the pairing was exquisite. Mm. Um, the sweetness and the peachy um, came right through, and it was a really unbelievable pairing. Um, the sweetness, little tad bit of cocoa that played the note in there was mm. just, it was really, really, really nice. Medium body, just how I like it, mm. not too overbearing. Um, the retro hail, it was had that definitely had that spice, but it wasn't like full blown crazy pepper spice. Yeah, yeah. But it was just just right. There was a smoothness to it. Yes, or is there is a um, people? I smoked through my entire bowl. Yeah, I just had to repack my pipe. <laughs> yeah, this stuff. I love Stonehenge. It is really really good stuff, mm. and. There, it is really hard to describe what's going on in yeah. that retro, Nick, isn't it? It's yeah. there is this smooth, creamy spiciness yeah. in the retro that is just really, really good. It is really nice, and the, the finish on this is really nice. You've got this kind of spiciness on your tongue, yeah, from the perique with like uh, wood notes, some leather. M maybe that little bit of chocolatey kind of sweetness to it. I, I got the chocolate, but it was like you said, it was very, very, very minuscule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not. It, it's not. Yeah, it plays a really, really small role. In it's it. like a chocolate-like sweetness, but it's not chocolate. Correct. You the know what the I mean? drink actually helped to enhance it a little bit mm. for me. It, I, it, I, I got a little bit more out of the uh, <clears throat> Jeffersons, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate. It. I actually, I actually picked up more of the of the the, the light chocolate flavor mm. from drinking the uh, <clears throat> the old fashioned, mm. and now that's now that I don't have it any longer, it's kind of taking a very back seat. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're still old fashioned, Paul. I know. Thanks, oh, man. that's Thanks, so man. sweet. What a beautiful pun. What about you, Dave? What uh, are you picking up? Other um, than your drink again, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what that hidden thing is in the uh, retro hail. And I was thinking maybe like a light bamboo or something because that's like a mm. sweet wood. 
And that, I feel like it's something like that. That's, that's the first time I've heard A that. nice bamboo <laughs> flavor. <laughs> mm, no, I, I know what you're saying. There's, it, there is a slight, there's a light woody quality to... It's like the undernote, <clears throat> mm-hmm. you know? Undertone. Undertone, note, whatever. Well, bamboo is an exotic wood, so I guess we could... He, he must be a wallaby. Describe it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Balsa, maybe? <laughs> Balsa, balsa wood, balsa, balsa mm. wood, balsa. Very smooth, very light. When I was younger, what does it taste like I used to very be smooth, make very those, light. those balsa <laughs> plane models, and I would lick the balsa. I would. So I know what it tastes like. And this <laughs> tastes After like I balsa. <laughs> uh, no. Um, no. Well, I did. You. Really? Well, I mean, also with model planes, I didn't really lick the wood. But. Oh, okay, that's 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 what I was. She just licked the glue. Uh, yeah, yeah, just the glue, yeah. <laughs> not the balsa. Just the glue. that was paste. <laughs> Sniff it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was a kid that always dipped his hands in like the paste jar and then, like let it dry and then like waited and just started peeling my skin off in front of the class and the girls would be like, "Yeah, it was fun." Oh, that was you. Yeah, yeah that, that was me. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Well, A, uh, something else we want to do here is uh, we want to give a little shout-out here to uh, Rod Z. And I say Rod Z a. really because I, I can't pronounce his last name. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. But Rod uh, Z, um, he sent us a picture of him smoking a cigar while listening to Not Just Blowing Smoke. And uh, we reposted that on our um, Instagram and uh, Facebook page, you can go and see. Um, Rod lives up in Canada, and uh, where he lives, they just got a ton of snow. Ton. I saw, ton. I saw that picture, and, and I was like, oh, God. You know, I saw pictures of him uh, basically opening up his garage door after the snow had finally fallen, and all you saw was snow. this wall of <laughs> snow where that had stopped where the door was. And uh, the, in this picture, it's it's awesome. He's sitting in his garage in a chair next to this wall of snow that was created um, uh, by being blown up against the garage door, and he's carved out this little shelf into the snow where he's put the bottle of his spirit and his ashtray and a cigar holder and he's just sitting there like this is this is just what we do in Canada you know and <laughs> and uh enjoying the the cigar listening to not just blowing smoke and that that was just awesome and so um what we would like to encourage our listeners to do is to uh do just that take a selfie of yourself smoking a cigar or a pipe or both you know we go both ways. Why shouldn't you? And take a picture of yourself while you're listening to the show and post it on your Instagram page or Facebook. and uh, Or you can email it to us or direct message it to us um, through Twitter or whatever. Use the hashtag not just blowing smoke so that we can find it. And if you do that and we find it, we will repost it on our own Instagram page, and we will give you a shout out here on the show. Yeah. So I think that's going to be fun. It'll be interesting to see if anyone does this. Mm. Yeah. Well, we already had one gentleman. We already had one do it. Let's keep the let's, ball rolling. Let's, let's see if we can rolling. get more people doing it. That would be awesome. All right. Um, What's your guys' final verdict on uh, the GLP's Stonehenge here? Wonderful, smooth, sweetness, spice. Just uh, an excellent, excellent, excellent tobacco. Two thumbs up. Mm. Excellent. Thanks, Dave. Excellent. Yep. This. (laughs) This. This. This, this is wonderful. Hmm. Um, it's kind of like right up my alley. You get all the really nice flavors in there. Medium body. You get a little bit of spice, which I really enjoy. And it goes really, really good with this old-fashioned that we have. 
or a really nice sweet cocktail. Um, it, it's it's a it's a it's a, a, a tobacco. I was gonna say cigar. It's a tobacco <laughs> that I that I would definitely buy and encourage other people to buy as well. I have spoken. <laughs> this is the way. Is it? <laughs> it is. Dave, what about yourself? Beautiful. <laughs> oh my it god. Is. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is definitely beautiful. Uh, the the Virginias are popping. The um, the the creamy spice uh, in the retro hail is absolutely out of this world. Um, it is such a relaxing smoke because you just keep trying to think about what you're smoking. There's a lot of different good things in this smoke that um, is not in is not in anything else we've smoked or I've smoked mm. and um, I'm enchanted by it mm. Ooh. now here's a question for you Nick I know you already kind of gave your final verdict sure but you have uh, taken another little dram there of the uh, Jefferson Ocean yes and uh, are still smoking this how does that go with the tobacco here I'm it, just curious it brings out it, it it's uh, how should I say this I guess it still kind of brings out some of the fruitness in the in the mm-hmm. tobacco the the sweetness but a little bit more subdued mm-hmm. I think with the other cocktail that we had it was really sweet um, not too sweet, but it was sweet, mm-hmm. and it brought out more of that sweetness of the Virginias and everything. And you can taste, you can bring through the little bit of cocoa in there. It kind of streams through just a tad. So bit. a similar, similar experience. It, a, a little bit, but in with a the, different with way. The, it's obviously it's right. straight. You're but with some of the, with some of the, with some of the the flavors in the tobacco, you mm-hmm. can't really. I, I think you can't really taste in there, like the chocolate, the cocoa. Mm-hmm. That you can definitely taste in in the the cocktail, mm-hmm. you can't taste with the straight up Jeffersons. You're doing the same thing, right, Paul? Yeah. So what what I notice is that the the sweetness has been muted. <coughs> Any chocolate notes that I picked up was gone. Mm. The the spice has been picked has picked up. Mm. Both in the in the normal exhale and in the retro retrohale specifically, mm. that spice has now come on a, a lot more. Okay. But is it still a good? Oh, absolutely! It's good oh, it's, it's it, this would be a, a, even a, a it would be a great pairing, but it's going to be it's going to like I said before, it's going to pick up different, different things. things, absolutely. But yeah. I, I would absolutely pair this with the tobacco too. It would, oh, I wouldn't be afraid yeah. to do this one. Mm. Well, uh, I'm I'm you know I'm a huge fan of this tobacco, and uh, I think Kendra's Jefferson Old Fashioned here was amazing great and uh you know kind of going along with the uh um uh resolution thing of trying new things you know while i've uh like i admitted to earlier never really found a spirit that i didn't like that may surprise some of you that pastor padrone you know uh enjoys spirits of all kinds <laughs> not just mm. the holy spirit <laughs> oh, i was gonna say that <laughs> but uh it's like our friar tuck Yes, you know, I I don't have a whole lot of experience with cocktails and stuff and and I I've, I've, you know, I I would get a bourbon or a scotch or, you know, uh a liqueur or something and bring it home and do it, but I I not really do a whole lot of mixing. And being here at Twins, I'm experiencing drinks uh that I never would have and never would have thought to to try, you know, um like this old fashioned i this isn't something that i would have ordered on my own and i'm so glad i've tried it it is just really bringing out the the virginias in this tobacco and i'm just really really enjoying it just a, a fantastic thing and just uh, you know again if if you are in the area and you have the opportunity to come to twins for this pipe club pub uh, pairing class where you can learn how to do this um, on your on your own or, and can experience some of these perfect pairings that uh, Kendra and I have put together. Uh, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Um, 
it's just it's just a great a great time and uh, that class is you know I talk for all of about 20 minutes. The next hour, hour and a half is you drinking and, <laughs> and, and enjoying, you know, because that that's really how you learn to, to do this stuff is by experience. And it's experiencing new things. And, you know, uh, a, a lot of people who took that class uh, the last time, you know, uh, were trying their favorite tobaccos with a drink they never had had before. And were just amazed at the difference it made in the enjoyment of the tobacco that they were having. Mm-hmm. And the same is true with cigars. Um, you know, what you pair with your cigar can make a huge difference. And, um, you know, I just really encourage you to, to take that 25 bucks for two drinks. And that includes a bowl of the pipe tobacco, too, that you're going to be doing with. Um, that's a great deal. And uh, I hope that we have another sellout event be awesome sure we will that was awesome you've been listening to not just blowing smoke the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge expertise and fun of twins smoke shop new england's premier smoke shop right to you wherever you are whenever you want it you can find us at our website not just blowing smoke.com and keep in touch with us on facebook youtube twitter and instagram at not just blowing smoke Thanks for listening, everybody. And that is not just blowing smoke. Rolling with the top down. Floor.